Hi, Sarah. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to be asking you a few questions about your experience as a Skadden Fellow and, um, and, and pursuing a postgraduate public interest fellowship. So first, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and um, your pre professional journey. Well, thanks so much for having me today. Um, I am glad to talk, I'll say right at the beginning, glad to talk with any students um, at the law school who have more questions. Um, after this, I really believe in the power and importance of mentoring um, and in the importance of having lots of informational interviews to learn what you want to do throughout your legal career. So please feel free to reach out and I'll leave my contact information with the Career Services Office. Um, so yes, I, my name is Sarah uh, Ladd and I was Sarah Warpinski when I went to school um, and I currently live in the state of Minnesota. I work for the Minnesota Department of Human Services as the Human Trafficking Child Protection Coordinator. So in my current role, which I've been in for almost four years now, I am the policy lead um, and the policy um, kind of expert in terms of human trafficking of children um, and the child welfare system response. So I serve on our state level safe harbor leadership team, um, which is essentially um, a role in which I make policy. I provide technical assistance about policy. I advise on um, laws, legislative changes, and I provide training and direct consultation and technical assistance for our county and tribal child welfare agencies, as well as law enforcement prosecutors, um, service providers, shelters, all kinds of folks who are working with children, youth, and families um, in Minnesota and around the country um, where there's been a situation of human trafficking sex trafficking or labor trafficking. And then finally, I do also serve um, on the steering committee of the National Child Welfare Anti-Trafficking Collaborative, which is which I helped to found about a year ago. Um, and that is really a, a national technical assistance and consultation network for state level policymakers um, and tribal tribal government policymakers who are working specifically in the area of anti-trafficking response. Incredible. So that's Thank a little you. bit about me. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your experience at MSU Law? You are an alum. And um, what kind of experiences you took advantage of and that shaped um, your career path and also that led you to deciding to apply for a public interest fellowship? Sure. So I graduated in 2013 from MSU Law. Um, I went to law school as a, a little bit older student. I had worked um, for six years after undergrad and I had done mostly international development work and some uh, local community development work around the U.S. Um, and a lot of work with human rights abuses domestic and domestic violence, sexual assault. Um, and of course, trafficking. Um, and so I, when I went to law school, I knew from day one, day one of writing my application and my personal statement that the only reason I was going to law school at all was because I wanted to change the way that our country, that our world views survivors of trafficking. And I wanted to have the tools to advocate for them and not only to advocate for them, but to advocate with them and really to co-create with survivors of trafficking systemic level and individual and community level solutions, redresses, create justice with them um, and be able to prevent trafficking using some of those legal tools. And so that was why I went to law school. So right from the beginning, I started um, looking for opportunities to work with to work with this issue of human trafficking. So right from in my 1L courses, I remember going to each of my professors and talking with them about, you know, in constitutional law, what does, you know, where are the origins of anti-trafficking laws, et cetera, and doing that through all of my, my coursework at, at MSU. 
Um, and then I applied for, I had a number of internships that were really significant in, in my legal career um, and a number of opportunities at Michigan State that really shaped, my, shaped me in my profession now and shaped my ability to get the types of um, opportunities that I had. So I first um, had an internship with International Justice Mission, which is an international anti-trafficking organization. I worked um, in their summer legal internship um, in La Paz, Bolivia. It was really funny because that internship is is somewhat um, is somewhat prestigious, and I was the only non-Ivy League person who got the internship that summer after my one L year, um, and that was a fantastic experience. Coming out of that, I I. Actually, right after I worked for IJM, I began working in the immigration law clinic. And thank you to David and Veronica Bronson. They were tremendous mentors to me. I worked with the immigration clinic for the semester. Um, so I absolutely loved that experience. It really taught me how to issue spot trafficking and how to, how to really begin to shape who I was as a lawyer, right? What does it what does it look like for Sarah Warpinski at that time to interact with survivors, to interact with people who need legal assistance? Um, and then through that experience, I actually learned about the Saddam Fellow program because David Johnson is himself a former Saddam Fellow. So he really, at the beginning of my 2L year, started encouraging me to put myself on a path to apply for the Skadden Fellowship, build a really great project and get awarded a Skadden Fellowship. And so then he kind of advised and guided me along with the Career Services Office to really map out what I wanted to do with my legal career. I remember creating this three page word document um, and going over it at the beginning of my 2L year. And I think even in the second semester of my 1L year, going over it and saying, okay, these are the experiences that I really want to make sure to have. These are the areas of law that I want to explore. If I'm going to get to this goal, creating a, an anti-trafficking related legal services project that could get funded through a SCAD and um, And so some of the other pieces in that for me were um, I applied at the beginning of my 2L year for a Department of Justice, U.S. Department of Justice Summer Legal Internship position, the, the SLIP program, and I was awarded, um, I was one of two um, paid legal interns that summer in the civil division of the Department of Justice. And I worked in the district, the Office of Immigration Litigation District Court section and had just a tremendous experience living and working out in Washington, DC. Um, and specifically really learning, you know, where where in that um, in my work in Bolivia and in my work in the immigration clinic, I really learned that like one-to-one -one client relationship. I really learned kind of how to, like I said, how to issue spot, how to have some of those soft skills that are so critical if you are going to be working, if you in your role as a lawyer are going to be really going to the lowest of the low places and really meeting clients in some of the darkest moments of their lives, that takes some intentionality to do that well and not in a way um, that actually causes more harm. And so those are some of the skills I learned in those experiences. Then at the Department of Justice, I really learned how to be excellent in my details, in my legal research, in my writing, how to really do those hard skills that it takes to be a, a phenomenal lawyer. And so, so that was a great experience. And I loved it so much that I decided that I would return to Washington, D.C. And I took advantage of an amazing program at Michigan State, which is the D.C. semester. I actually got my last semester of law school right before I graduated. Um, and I did a semester long externship for credit um, at the Department of Justice again, but in the criminal division in the child exploitation and obscenity section. So then by doing that, I actually had all of those pieces in place that I had laid out in that initial plan at the end of my 1L year with the Career Services Office um, that I wanted to get experience in 
in immigration law, in direct client contact, in really the anti-trafficking movement as a whole, um, which I did through some volunteer work with the, the Michigan Human Trafficking Task Force through the duration of my law school career. Um, and then I also got both that civil and criminal experience in working with trafficking related issues. And so with all of that together, I was able, um, and through the mentoring of David Thronson, I was able to apply for a SCADM fellowship. And I built a, a project proposal um, through the Family Justice Center of Northwest Ohio, um, which was which is a collaborative kind of group of organizations, including Legal Aid of Western Ohio. And that that model, when I heard about it, it, it to me captured exactly where legal services needed to go in terms of meeting some of the unmet needs of trafficking survivors. And I specifically chose a project location in a very rural part of Ohio. I specifically chose an area where that it was a big area geographically that I decided to work in. And it was a collaborative setting where I had victim advocates and domestic violence shelters and other legal services providers and anti-trafficking coalitions that all were working, trying to work together, but didn't really have that legal representation piece in place for survivors yet. And so, and so that was kind of how I did my project. And I remember driving down, um, you have to, with a Scott and Fellowship, you have to your proposal um, and have it all submitted and have your support from your partner organization by the very beginning of your 3L year, like around Labor Day-ish. And, so, um, and so I remember driving down there on August 30th, right before it was going to be due, and driving to this random place three hours away in this little tiny town of 8,000 people and meeting together in this kitchen with the advocates and the lawyers who were working with domestic violence, the shelter staff and, um, and the law enforcement and the judge and just saying, hey, this is, this is what I've learned. This is what my vision is. What does your community need? And is this something that would work? And so we started to build the proposal and um, I submitted my application and it, I got funded as a Skadden Fellow, and I was the first Skadden Fellow uh, from Michigan State Law School. Um, and again, in that year, I, I was the only Skadden Fellow who proposed the project and got funded to do work in a rural, um, in a rural area. Um, and it was really the opportunity of a lifetime. That's just incredible. And I, I love your, your advice and story about how you came up with that plan and how you really took those actions to um, to effectuate that plan, that's incredible. Um, can I ask you one last question? What advice do you have to students currently who might be thinking about applying for, um, there are a number of different public interest postgraduate fellowship programs, including Skadden and Equal Justice Works um, and many others. What, what, what advice do you give to students who are thinking about um, applying to one of these programs? You know, I, I've been thinking about this and I do, I have spoken with a lot of students um, and I would be happy to speak with you if you as a student are thinking of applying for a SCADM fellowship. In fact, before I answer your question, I will say that one of the most amazing things about the SCADM fellowship program is the network of support. Every single SCADM fellow that I have ever spoken with is so open to once a Skadden Fellow, always a Skadden Fellow is what Susan Butler Plum, uh, the Skadden Fellowship Foundation director, what she says. Um, and it's so true. So don't hesitate. If you're thinking of applying, I guess this is my first piece of advice. If you're thinking of applying specifically for a Skadden Fellowship or even an Equal Justice Works Fellowship, most Skadden Fellows also applied for that in my experience. Um, I would say don't hesitate to reach out read through all the information that's online, find the contact information, reach out to me, reach out to David Thronson, um, and really get connected with people who, who did similar kinds of things that you want to do, um, and or who work in, in the same state you want to propose a project. So I would say that's my first piece of advice, is reach out to people. Um, you can learn best by kind of learning from the 
the, the mistakes that they made, the lessons they learned. So, um, so that's one. The other thing that I would say is be really, um, so I guess two other pieces, um, be really intentional with how you, you know, if you think um, that you might be interested in applying for a fellowship and building your own project to provide legal services, start thinking about it as early as possible. Um, now, I know in my in my story, I didn't actually build a relationship with my partner organization and like come up with the plan until pretty close to when the fellowship application was due. But for a long time before that, since since the second semester of my 1L year, and honestly, even before in terms of some of the volunteer work that I was doing, um, I was working on, you know, overall, what is needed? What Skadden Fellowship and Equal Justice Works Fellowship programs are looking for and possibly others is really passionate, intelligent students who have, who know the needs and who have a vision for how to meet those unmet legal needs. So follow your passion, work your hardest at your academics, and really shape what that vision is. Shape the values that, that inform it as far as you as a legal professional. Why are you doing this? What, what is it that you really want to accomplish? That is what Skadden wants to fund. That's, what, that's the type of lawyers that Skadden wants to have in its network. And, um, and so I would say really work to, to develop that from as early as possible in your career. Um, so, and then I would say too, I guess the, the last point that I would say is really take advantage of the resources, right? There are so many amazing professors. There is so much wisdom at the career services office. Um, you know, even beyond the things that I mentioned, I also worked as a teaching assistant for three semesters with actually maybe four semesters, I think all of my all year um, with the LLM program at the law school, learned so much through even just the mentorship of the professors in that program and through working with foreign educated lawyers. Um, and, you know, take advantage of the resources, have those conversations and network, network, network. I know that's kind of a dirty word when you're in law school, but honestly, um, Networking, not in the fake superficial cocktail party way, but which we don't do in COVID anyway, but, <laughs> but um, network in the way of genuinely, you know, sit down with people, even virtually, and hear about their experiences, get to know them as a person, get to know them as a lawyer, find out what their priorities were and how they got to the position they're in. And then chart your course, right? Build it, build it. Okay, if you find somebody who's doing what you want to do, Try and build a plan that is going to get you there. Um, and again, reach out if you have questions. Sarah, thank you so much for your time today. This, I'm sure students will find this to be just loaded with valuable information. And um, we appreciate everything that you do. And um, thank you again for your time today. You're very welcome. Good luck to you all. <laughs>